let me let you in on a little secret. Bridgerton is all about secrets. Keeping them, telling them, unmasking them, guarding them. With production having kicked off for the fourth season of Bridgerton and talks within the community about the casting of Ayerin. Sorry, I watched way too many Asian dramas to not put her family name first. It's got me thinking about one of the central themes of Benefi, the ship name for Benedict Bridgerton and Sophie Beckett in the books, who has been renamed Sophie Bake for the show as a nod to Yerin's South Korean heritage, kind of similar to Kate Sheffield's change to Kathani Sharma. But as I was saying, one of the central themes of Benofi's romance in the books is that of secrets, how they frame and shape our identities to ourselves, to those we love, to those we resent and hate, and how even with those same secrets, they are those that the characters keep to themselves and those that are a shared experience with their partners. Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, which is the book that season four will aim to adapt, focused quite heavily on Sophie's secret identity, Benedict's secret obsession with her, the secret nature of their relationship, the Beckett family secret, and Sophie's refusal to be a secret. Because for a large part of her story, her identity has been a secret. And with the casting of Irene as Sophie Bake, Michelle Mao as Rosamond Lee, Rosie Lee for short, Isabella Wei as Posey Lee, yes, their mother named her daughters Rosie and Posey, an act worthy of a true villain that is Lady Araminta Gunn that will be played by the brilliant Katie Lung, who we all know as Cho Chang, and who hopefully, for me at least, is finally going to be leaving that defining character behind and enter a villain era. But as I was saying, with this, it is clear that the theme of secrets is going to remain a core part for Benedict and Sophie's season, as it has been for all the other couples we have gotten so far. Because yes, every single Bridgerton couple, every love story we've gotten so far have been focused on navigating secrets. With Simon and Daphne, the true nature of their relationship, at least as it started, was kept a secret from their family and friends. Anybody outside of their relationship did not need to know the workings and truth of said relationship, i.e., They are just acquaintances who are using each other and their fake relationship to get what they want. For Daphne getting herself a suitable match to try and fix what Anthony had attempted to sabotage. For Simon getting the mamas of the ton off his back as he was very actively disinterested in entering the marriage mart. And so they worked out their arrangement and got along swimmingly well. So well that they became friends with their secret jokes and smiles and laughs and their secret club that nobody else had access to but the both of them. Their shared secret elevated their relationship and eventually turned it into something more, which then meant their secret expanded because now they were each battling with a secret attraction for each other that they needed to ensure that the other person never realizes. Daphne is having sex dreams and Simon is watching her flirt across the room with prospective suitors. And we, the audience, are in on the secret and are entertained by it, wondering when it would be revealed and if either of them would give it away first. Because that's the thing about secrets. The longer you spend in proximity with the person who you're trying to hide said secret from, the more likely it is for everything you're hiding to get revealed. And then Simon takes it a step further because he's keeping one more secret that Daphne has zero idea about. His vow to his father to make sure that he is the last of the Bassets to lay claim to the Hastings title. So the dukedom would move from their family to someone else by virtue of him having no heirs as a punishment for his father's abuse. It is an extra layer to the secret that gives us more of an insight into Simon's character and his identity. We see him as the young boy 
hurt by his father's neglect, who has now grown into a man who is desperate for payback for that neglect and battling with his attraction and desire for Daphne, which when it culminates in a kiss during her escape into the Queen's Garden, has to make a choice. Keep his secret or keep the woman he's starting to love. He chooses a secret and his love, thinking he can get to keep both. The show has him unable to do so, however, and Daphne, upon her discovery of what he's been hiding from her, lashes out in a truly egregious act. But the two do eventually come to a resolution. The secret of Simon's childhood is revealed to Daphne to help her truly see him and understand what drives him and the positions he's decided to take. It is how she's able to appeal to him and convince him to give them a chance. He does. And with all their secrets out in the open, including the fake relationship one, which Daphne does come around to revealing to her mother when she's hurt and reeling from the secret Simon had kept from her and taking advantage of her ignorance on the matter. With all those secrets out, Saphne is finally able to get their happy ending. Canthony's secret is a bit of a different nature. Unlike Saphne, there wasn't a fake relationship or a forced wedding, which did happen as well in Canthony's book, mind you. No, their secret had at its core the attraction to one another. You see, Saphne's secret started with their arrangement. Their feelings followed after that and thus their secrets became compounded as they juggled keeping their existing partnership in motion whilst hiding the fact that things had gotten markedly complicated for the both of them. Anthony and Kate didn't have that problem. Theirs was very different and I think personally worse. Because like Simon and Daphne, Anthony was dealing with their attraction and trying to hide and fail at hiding just how attracted they were to each other from each other. Neither of them could look away. They were drawn by some magnetism that pulled their eyes to each other whenever they were in the same room or breathing the same air. But like Safni, they had to keep that part of their relationship, that attraction, a shared secret from everyone else. As the stakes in their relationship was heightened further by the fact that Anthony Bridgerton was actively courting Kate's sister and planning to marry her whilst not being able to look away from Kate herself. It was a recipe for disaster. Especially because Edwina... Desperate to have her sister like the man she was interested in marrying, kept forcing the two of them into close proximity with each other, which just heightened the attraction and created pockets of avenues for these two idiots. And I can call them idiots lovingly, Your Honor, because I do love Kathani and Anthony Bridgerton. But as I was saying, all it did was create pockets of avenues for the two of them to fall even deeper into this love that they felt guilty for feeling and had to continue to maintain the secret for fear of being found out. Add the fact that both Kate and Anthony had an added layer of personal secrets that they were keeping to themselves, which was what was fueling this insistence on Edwina and Anthony marrying. I say so because I do see a substantial part of the fandom fail to mention that, that both Kate and Anthony had their own reasons and secrets for why they needed Anthony to be with Edwina. On Kate's part, it was because an engagement and eventual marriage to Anthony would help her baby sister, who she loves and has practically helped raise, have a substantial dowry, and reconnect with her grandparents. 
Kate, who up until the end of the season had convinced herself that her needs and wants don't matter because all that matters is Edwina and is willing to sacrifice our own love and desire, is willing to keep that desire and love a secret so her sister's happiness and future are secured. Anthony's own secret is tied to the fear. Fear of his wife being absolutely destroyed and devastated the way his mother was at her husband's passing. He firmly believed that better he not love at all than find someone he is actually in love with who loves him as intensely as he does her, which will shatter her completely when he dies. I think in a lot of our conversations about the book, something that keeps getting left out is the fact that The Viscount Who Loved Me, which is Anthony's book, does give Anthony Bridgerton further characterization that the show wasted by dwelling way too long on the love triangle in my book. What do I mean by that? Simple. In the books... Anthony is not just worried about saddling another woman with the same burden his mother had to undergo at his father's passing. He is terrified because Book Anthony had legit convinced himself that he was going to die young as well at age 38 like his father Edmund did. So he was utterly convinced for no reason, just He was certain of it and kept that thought a secret that only he knew and had access to that he was going to die young and leave his wife a young widow. And so, in order to save this imaginary wife from such pain, he decided better he marry someone he would have absolutely no chance at all of falling in love with so that she wouldn't make him the center of her world like Violet did Edmund. He also developed a fear of bees because his father was stung by one. Like sure, we get the slight panic attack sequence with Kate in the show and her trying to calm him down, but I will continue to insist that Kate and Anthony's relationship suffered greatly from the show, cutting out a lot of their heart-to-heart talks with each other which showed just how much they understood each other's pain and were perfect partners for one another. So we have these two characters with their shared secrets and personal secrets that is tied to who they are centrally as self-sacrificing parentified children at their core. And when the secret finally comes out, with Edwina noticing that her almost husband can't keep his eyes away from her sister and the rest of the ton finally clocking that the almost marriage didn't hold because the Viscount Bridgerton cannot stop looking at his almost bride's older sister with such clear love, devotion and desire. The two characters do get their chance at an happy ending. Free of secrets, and the way it had previously bound them to certain roles. Pauline also had to deal with a slew of secrets. Most of them, however, were borne by Penelope Featherington, which personally, I think is something the romance suffered slightly from. What do I mean by that? So, just like with the previous two couples, we see secrets within Pauline as a relationship. There's the shared secret that they have of Colin teaching Penelope how to be more confident in herself so she can attract a suitor that would marry her and take her far away from what would most likely be a life spent living underneath the thumb of her sisters who were both vying for the position of being the mother of the new Lord Featherington. The goal of their arrangement, therefore, depended on Colin teaching Penelope everything she needed to know to get out of her own head and be the pen who can attract anyone she wants, really. And the secret of the truth behind Penelope's newfound confidence being kept from everyone else. Colin, unfortunately, mentions it to Eloise, who proceeds to share the same secret with Cressida, but does it in a public space, not paying attention to the possibility of them being overhead, which of course meant that they were, 
and Penelope, humiliated at the whispers and gossips, flees the scene, and thus hers and Colleen's shared secret isn't kept a secret for long. But then, there's a chance for them to have another go at it when Colin, after realizing that Penelope is who he loves and who he wants, shows up at the ball to prevent a forthcoming proposal from Lord Deblin and then chases after Penn to give us some hot and heavy second base makeout session that we, the audience, are infinitely thankful for. That is a shared secret that they keep in the show. Even if Anthony and Benedict guess at it whilst they tease Colin, Colin doesn't spill and keeps the ride a private matter between himself and Penn. Now, do I think that the show should have spent more time having Colin and Penn keep their first shared secret? Yes, I do. I personally thought it was the more compelling of the shared secrets, but hey, I'm still happy that they got to have at least one. And just as with the other couples, there was also the personal secret. And in the case of Penelope, it was the biggest one yet. Her identity as the torn source of information and gossip. Lady Whistledown. It's a secret that she's been keeping from everyone in her life since the very first season and a personal secret that we, the audience, have been delighted with her ingenuity in maintaining since she first pushed down the hood on her coat in the last episode of season one and we got the Lady Whistledown reveal. I'm sure there was some bump in the road with Genevieve Delacroix and later Eloise Bridgerton discovering her secret, but she kept her secret mostly maintained. It was a core part of her identity, showed her ability as a good negotiator, her head for business, her keen observational skills, and her acute wit that only a few people in her life knew she had. And even with that, they didn't really pick up on it until it was staring them right in the face. Of all the characters we get in Bridgerton, Penelope Featherington has the biggest secret and the most influential secret identity. So of course it will take up a core part of the story. I was expecting that. We all were. And we were all expecting the secret to be discovered by Colin and to have Colin come to terms with it being revealed to him. But this is where I personally think that the ball was dropped slightly with Colin. Like I've already established, Colin followed the legacy that had already been set with the other romances that had come before it. They had a shared secret that was theirs and theirs alone to keep, which they didn't let others know. That was great. But unlike the other couples who had their own individual secrets, which the show was then able to show how they navigated the secrets and tried to keep their partners from discovering, with Pauline, the larger share of the personal secret was given to Penelope, which made Colin a mostly open book and Pen was the only one who had something to hide. And I know someone is about to come into my comments and mention that, well, Noria, we can consider that Colin's attraction to Penn might be said to be his personal secret, which, yes, makes sense. And it would have worked perfectly if the story had taken it a step further. Because sure, Colin had a sex dream of Penn and there was a brief moment of him watching her mouth as she tried some sweets and cakes, but I'm firmly in the camp that the show should have fleshed the Colin is discovering that he is now really looking at Penelope Featherington as not just the girl who's always been his friend, but the woman he really desires and is falling in love with. And now he is panicking because she absolutely cannot find out as he doesn't want to ruin his friendship with her because damn it she is pen she is his pen and he swore to her and made a commitment to her to help her get a suitable a suitable suitor 
and he cannot afford to ruin this for her. And so he must keep this a secret and work out whatever this is out of his system arc a bit more. Not in the two episodes that we were given. I know some people might disagree with me on this and that is fine. But it would have been great to have had more close calls of Colin realizing that shit, he almost fucked up and almost gave it away to Penn that he's starting to like her in a way that is beyond just their friendship. It would have been a delicious secret to watch him try to keep from her. But alas, we do, however, get thrown the secret bone by the show because with Penn's secret identity as Lady Whistledown revealed to Colin, it becomes part of her secret and becomes a core part of helping her maintain it. So when she's being blackmailed by Cressida, he steps up to the plate to play his role in keeping identity a secret, which when I consider it with regards to that particular theme, I did enjoy and appreciate. And when Penelope willingly reveals her secret by choice to the entirety of the ton, it is the catalyst needed for Penn and Colin to get their happy ending which is consistent with how all the stories have played out so far. And then there's Georgette, the romance that sees Queen Charlotte and King George gain their happy ending. Like the other couples, they too carry secrets through their relationship. There's the personal secret that is George needing to keep his struggles with his mental health and the slow decline of his sanity and loss of memory, a secret from his new bride. And the show does explore the lengths it would go to, to maintain that secret. As it is his fear of her finding out that has him willingly going back to the cruel treatments that Dr. Monroe puts him through. He is so desperate to keep his fears and flaws a secret from Charlotte that he basically agrees to be tortured for her, for his people, for his own sanity. Charlotte, on the other hand, never brings up to him the casual racism that she's constantly being met with from his mother and the members of parliament. Also, she can marry him. It's a secret that she maintains and doesn't give in to except for when she mentions how it will be good for those like her, for them to show up in their capacity as king and queen to the Danbury Ball which does stamp the legitimacy of the newly acquired titles that had been given to the lords and ladies of color in their world by virtue of her marriage to George. But like the others, they also have their shared secrets that they maintain. Initially, there's the secret of their unconsummated marriage that is only confirmed to the Dowager Princess Augusta by Agatha Danbury. And when they do eventually consummate their marriage, but find themselves on the out because of Charlotte stumbling onto George's conversation with his mother that made him seem like he had been forced to be with her, the two of them kept the secret of their separately maintained estates until they eventually make up. But I do think their biggest shared secret is with regards to George's anxiety which makes him addressing parliament an impossibility and the declining state of George's mental health, which they keep away from the members of parliament and the people. Matter of fact, season two of Bridgerton shows us just how much work has been put in to make sure that others do not know the exact state of George's mind and memory when he wanders into the private conversation of Queen Charlotte, Lady Danbury, Violet Bridgerton, Mary Sharma, and Edwina Sharma. It is why Charlotte is so grateful for the grace and kindness with which Edwina responds to the love of her life, who is stuck in another time and place in his own head. Unlike the other couples on the list, Charlotte and George are driven to maintain their shared secrets as they do so not just for their own sakes, but for the sake of the realm. Having their king be seen as having any sort of weakness does not a good empire make. And so they keep their shared secrets and are able to maintain their happiness 
although it's not necessarily a happy ending because of their very different circumstances from the others. But the secrets aren't just limited to the couples. Even individuals within the world of Bridgerton also have secrets that they give their all to hide and keep. Secrets that are tied to identities that they are desperate to maintain. Portia Featherington is desperate to maintain her secrets about how exactly the Featheringtons came back into money that saved them. She spins the story of a dead aunt who left her an inheritance to hide the fact that the money came from the members of the ton that she and Jack Featherington had swindled when they were running the Ruby scam. Also, they can maintain the identity of being part of their elite circle and keep their place within the ton. Genevieve Delacroix desperately maintains her false identity as a seamstress from France so she can keep her clientele. Then there's Archibald Featherington, desperate to still maintain his place in their society. And the facade of not being the absolute, almost penniless baron that cannot afford to pay his daughter's dowry because he has gambled it all away. There's Cressida, who is willing to do anything, even take on her mother's help in order to continue living the lie of her being Lady Whistledown. Because it is that identity of notoriety that keeps her safe and with enough coin to not have to do her father's bidding. And then there's Lord Cowper and to some extent Lady Cowper who sent Cressida away to live with an aunt in the middle of nowhere and basically turn her into some sort of dirty secret. That's Bridgerton for you. A show filled with glitz, glamour, gossip and secrets and i am so excited to know that season four will continue that trend although considering that posey lee apparently is going to be interested in benedict i am praying to all the gods that we not be stuck with yet another love triangle fingers crossed that even if we are it doesn't take up center stage like what we went through with bridgerton season two because let me let you in on a pretty open secret. I really, really hated season two's love triangle. And I know I'm not the only one. I found it absolutely frustrating. And I've still not forgiven Bridgerton for not giving Kate and Anthony their own poster. They are the only couple that had to share their spotlight with the other woman. And this girl is still miffed. But yeah. That's about it. Did you enjoy what I had to say? Did you clock the role that the many, many secrets have played in the relationships we've gotten so far from seasons one through three and even Queen Charlotte as well? Or did I give you something new to think about? Let me know in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Hit the dislike button if you didn't. Like I always say, the choice rests with you and I make no secrets of that. Share this video if you think others should hear what I have to say and we can all have that conversation. I personally find it entertaining and it all helps my channel grow and is incredibly supportive of my content. Speaking of support, a huge thank you to my patrons who help me keep the lights on. Thank you all. If you would like to support me on Patreon and can afford it, the link to do so is in the description bar. I make new videos three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. All my videos drop at 5 p.m. EST on upload days. Whilst you wait for new content from me, do check out my video about how I think Bridgerton fathers, even the ones who are seemingly absent, play a more vital role in the show than you might have thought. Until next time, do remember, obsessing over the things you love, perfectly valid coping mechanism.